All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. Thank you. All right. So um, who has a contact form uh, on your site or your client site? Okay. Just about everybody here. All right. So we're all in the right place this morning. <laughs> Just needed to make sure. All right. So uh, what did you use to build that form? Anybody? Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay. All right. All right. Anybody do any kind of hand coding? You? Okay. <laughs> All right. You, you know, I, I actually answered a question on Reddit the other day where someone was trying to, they wanted to code their own form with PHP and add it to WordPress, and so they were kind of having trouble with that. And so um, most of the answers were um, use a form builder. <laughs> All right. If you're trying to add a, a form to WordPress, so I just wanted to check. All right. Um, if you use a form builder, uh, do you use it for anything else other than your contact form? Okay. All right. What do you use it for? Um, taking donations. Okay. Um, in fact, I use your plugin. Really? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, awesome. Because uh, I was ready to set up the reoccurring okay. stuff. Okay. Your plugin is possible. Nice. Nice. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I actually had a, uh, a customer say to me, um, you know, what can I really do with a form builder? You know, everybody talks about how fantastic it is, but, you know, how fantastic is it really? So I'm here because, well, Judy and the other organizers, you know, allowed me to come back. But um, because if you're only using a form builder, you know, just for a contact form, you're kind of missing out. All right, on what can be a really great multi-purpose kind of Swiss Army knife tool um, that you can pull out of your toolbox for any site that you're building, all right, saving you and your clients time and money. All right, so a question that, uh, you know, sometimes I hear is, well, when should I think about using a form builder? You know, how do I know that this might be the right tool for the job? And so my, my simple answer is always, you know, whenever you need to receive information and then do something with that, then that might be, you should consider whether that's a, you know, your form builder would be a, um, you know, might be a good tool for the job. All right. And so that sounds very generic. Okay. Receive information and do something with it. But that's actually the beauty of a form builder. All right. Because whenever you need a tool that will not make assumptions all right, about the type of information that you want to collect and then what you want to do with it, you should consider whether your form builder would be a good tool for that job. And what do I mean by assumptions? How many of you have actually tried to customize an e-commerce plugins checkout page? All right, to add your own fields because you want to collect additional information. All right, it sounds like it should be so simple, all right? But it's, it's actually, it's a bear. You know, and it's because they assume, you know, a one-size-fits-all type of approach. And you're like, well, maybe I want to do something different for my business. You know, how many of you have heard that, you know, having a, um, you know, a discount code field on your checkout page actually reduces uh, conversions? Anybody here? Have you heard that? And the reason why is because people see... Yeah, they'll stop and go look. I do it. <laughs> okay. You know, you stop and you go look for a code. So what if you want to hide that? All right. It's not exactly intuitive. All right. It's not very easy. And so people say, well, that's what I've got. So I'll just, you know, I'm kind of stuck with it because they don't know anything else to do. So instead of trying to force your business into tools that either don't allow you to collect all of the information that you need or force you to collect more information than what you need, all right? Um, there are, and I'm picking on e-commerce plugins, I'm sorry. Uh, but, you know, there are, you know, e-commerce plugins where you might say, well, maybe I don't want to send people to another checkout page. I just want to have, you know, a nice, slim, one-page checkout because I've heard that the less fields that you have, you know, the higher the conversions. Well, again, that's not exactly simple to do, all right? So ask yourself whether... A form builder might be a good, uh, a good tool for that. All right. And form builders can be a way for you to build the perfect system for running your business. All right. That does exactly what you tell it to do. Again, because it does not make assumptions. All right. Nothing more, nothing less. 
form builders put you back in control of your site. Okay? Minority report style. Has anybody here seen minority report? You've seen them do the cool things? Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. All right. So now let's take a look at what we can do. All right, and in, in, mo in many of these examples, I will mostly be using gravity forms, and that's just because of speed for me, personally. All right, it's the quickest form builder for me to personally, you know, get set up because I'm, I'm used to it. All right, um, but use whatever form builder you're comfortable with. All right, they all pretty much have the same capabilities. Okay, so don't be turned off by gravity forms. All right, so email lists. Let's say you just want to collect a list of emails. And it might sound so simple, all right? But I can tell you that I, have, I was speaking to a nonprofit customer, and they used, they used one of my add-ons, and they said they did not know about the mailing list add-ons, so they were adding people manually. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, please, <laughs> no. There's a way for you to do that, all right? So you just want to collect a list of email addresses so that you can email them later. All right, and here's an example. All right, you have your form that I just showed you, and um, then you can simply choose the, the list. If you're, it doesn't matter if you're using MailChimp or not, but you just choose the list that you want to add the person to, and you map the fields. You know, let's say you have an email, a first and a last name field, and you choose the fields on the form that are going to go into those uh, spots. Okay, so it takes about five minutes. All right, and there you've, uh, you know, you've got some automation. You know, and it's interesting because there are some plugins out there that still, um, you know, people are asking for mailing list uh, integrations. You know, please build something for MailChimp, Constant Contact, because <coughs> you would think it's simple, but, um, you know, some of the tools that are out there don't have that capability. All right. So next, uh, user registration. Okay. Let's say, you know, you don't want to send people to the back end of your site, but you want them to be able to sign up for an account for some reason. I don't know why. The form builder doesn't care either. Doesn't care why you want to do it. All right, so you create a form. It has a username and a password, and you can put it anywhere on your site. Okay. And then what, what it will do is it will create a user with that username and password and send them their information. Okay. And again, that's something that you know, people sometimes struggle with. You know, how can I allow people to register for my site, but on the front end, all right, so that I don't have to send them to any of the WordPress pages, and I just want to put a registration form wherever I want. Okay. All right. And next, my favorite topic, money. Okay. Um, let's say you just need to take a payment for something. Okay. I, I don't know. You know, but. You hear, all right, I need to take a payment for something. I need to install a big e-commerce plugin. No, you don't, okay? If you just have, you know, one or two products, um, you know, it, I, I actually asked uh, Brian Krogsgaard yesterday, I said, um, you know, for his post status membership, okay? I said, why are you using WooCommerce? <laughs> okay, you have one product. <laughs> why are you using an e-commerce plugin? And he told me, you know, because he has future plans. But the thing is, if you only have one product or a few products, you don't need a big e-commerce plugin. You don't have to send people through a whole checkout process. All right? There is an easier way. All right. And here's an example here. Somebody mentioned that they were using, um, using uh, my plugin, which uh, integrates with Gravity Forms for, uh, for taking donation. And here's an example, all right? These people, let's see, they can donate monthly or donate one time, and then you can come here to one page and give your information, and there you are. No checkout process. You can add exactly the fields that you want to, all right? And in this example, this is actually uh, an invoice, all right? So I showed you one with donations, all right? This is one for invoicing. And the cool thing that I like about this is that um, they say, well, I have multiple clients. Do I need to create a form for each client? No. Most form builders have a neat little thing called dynamic population, all right? And it sounds very techy. But basically what it does is it allows you to, in the URL, it allows you to pass in the values for each of those fields so that for every client, here I have you know, what does it say in the URL? First equal Larry, last equal page, email equal Larry at page.com. 
The product is an invoice and the price is $1,000. This is a form that I actually use, all right? Anytime I need to do a one-off invoice for somebody, this is just one form that I have and I simply pass in the parameters and they can just come there and they can pay, okay? And I have a customer. There are um, add-ons for your form builder that can create a PDF, all right, from the responses from the form. And so here's, here's an example. Now, this is a longer form. But here's an example of what you can do. The person fills out this form, and a PDF is generated and sent to them. So he uses it for invoicing. He has, he has uh, recurring payments on his site, just using his form builder, so <coughs> subscription payments. And each time the person pays, an invoice gets generated, and it gets added to the notification email that gets sent to the client, thanking them for their payment. All right, so now let's kind of put some of this together. All right. Event registrations. Okay. And this is an actual example of an event registration form that I created that uh, it's been used for a yearly event now for about three years. Okay. And notice that you kind of have the, uh, the multi-page form feature. All right, so you can see here this is just the first step. And what that does is it splits things up. I think there was a session yesterday talking about uh, um, some you know, optimal ways to set up your form so that you don't turn people off. There's nothing worse than coming to a form and it's like 60 fields and you're like, mm, I'm going to come back and do that later. <laughs> All right? And later might never come. All right, so here this, is, this form has five steps. The first step is just getting uh, contact information. And notice here this... Um, there we go. Notice here this registration for a group, okay? When you have an event, you might have one person that's registering for a whole group. And so there's a field that most, most of these form builders have, and it's called a list field, all right? And if you say you're registering for a group, then these fields will conditionally show, okay? So they don't show right away. When I come back here, it just says, are you registering for a group? Well, if you click yes, then we're going to conditionally show some other fields, all right? So that's a good way for you to be able to um, make sure forms are not showing too much information at once, all right? And then what you can do is for each group member, they can click the plus, and it will add another field for them to add another group member's name, okay? Okay, um, and then you can see here that we're utilizing uh, payments. All right, so they're going to be able to pay for their event tickets. All right, there's a, a brunch here, and yeah, there's a brunch there that they can pay for as part of this event. And then this event was uh, selling ads in an, in an ad booklet. And so what you can do is you see there where it says photo, logo, choose file. They can also upload files. I had someone contact me. Um, about setting this up for their funeral homes. They do designs for funeral homes. And so it was a really lengthy process because they were emailing the designs back and forth. So they said, well, can I set up a form where they can just upload the files? All right, just let them upload the files so that we'll have them and we'll put them in the proper folders, okay? So you can upload files with your form builder. All right, and then finally we come to the last page here and uh, we can pay. Okay, so that's an example of using multiple things in one. Now here's something that a lot of people don't think about. A simple membership site, all right? If you don't need drip content, all right, why are you using a huge membership plugin, all right? If you just need for the users to be able to register and pay, your form builder might be a good tool for that, okay? Because it's very simple. Um, All right, the next thing is user submitted content, okay? Let's say you want them to be able to create a post on your site, but you don't want to give them access to the back end. You know, you don't want them to be, you know, going into uh, the WordPress dashboard. For most of your form builders, you just add some fields here and it will create a post, all right? On the back end, you just kind of hit a setting saying, with this form, create a post from the responses. So again, this shows the versatility 
of what you can do. It's not making assumptions, all right? It's saying here, these are the fields. Now you have a field day, <laughs> all right? <laughs> all right, you do whatever you want to do with this. All right, job listings and applications. Somebody mentioned a client intake form, which is, you know, somewhat like that. All right. Um, with this particular form, I don't have it up yet. Let's see. All right, so with this particular form, they're just going to add the, uh, the title, the description, you know, everything about their form. They're going to submit it. And then here's the cool thing. All right. What you can do is then you can come in later and it's going to list everything out. And this is all done with a form builder. Okay. Some people think you need a job manager plugin, which if you need, you know, all of the features of a job manager plugin, please use that. That will be the best tool for the job. But if you just need something simple, and I hope you kind of get that, the recurring theme from this. If you just need something simple, a form builder could be a good tool for the job. And again, it saves you time and money because it's something that you already have. Everybody here said they already have a contact form. You're likely using a form builder. So try it out for your particular use case. And here, the search form. That's also done by this particular form builder. All right, you just create your search form and you can search through all of the entries, all of the submissions that were made for that form. Okay. All right. Um, by default, no, but there is an add-on, okay. and um, it's called Gravity View. Gravity View. Yeah, and so Gravity View is what adds that missing functionality to Gravity Forms. Uh, this particular form builder is uh, is Formidable Pro, and that's actually what why it was created was specifically for the purpose of uh, being able to add entries and edit them on the front end and search through them. All right, um, so now here's one of those jobs that we saw listed here. All right, here's one of those jobs. And you see the Apply Now button. And when a person clicks Apply Now, they can add all their information and attach their resume. Okay? And you said that's Gravity View? Gravity View is what does it for Gravity Forms. Okay. This particular uh, example is from Formidable Pro. Okay. Where is the data? I mean, is it just an email? I'm sorry. Where is it stored? You know, are you storing the data locally or are you sending it only an email? All of these form builders store their data in the database. In the, in the WordPress? In the WordPress database, and they all have the functionality to be able to email it as well. So when the form is submitted, you can set up what's called a notification email that will send the form data wherever you need it to go. Each form builder has their own table, and all of the information is stored in that form builder's tables. All right. And do they have ways to display that data? I guess that's what. Yep, that's exactly what this is. Uh, Formidable Pro has it built in. Uh, Gravity Forms and Ninja Forms, and I'm, I'm mentioning those because those are like the top three. Gravity Forms, Ninja Forms, Formidable Pro, those are the top three form builders for, um, I would say, for business use. Okay. Um, but Gravity Forms and Ninja Forms uh, have add-ons. How are you doing, girl? Good. Good. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, I have another question along the same line. Yes. Um, the dy dynamically populating, mm -hmm. is it possible for um, another job that has a job application on a website that says Gravity View, I'm probably going to go back and change it so I can do it like that. Okay. But uh, to dynamically populate um, a job title available job in a drop down from a, a post that they've done. So pull a post title from a post category and populate that drop down so when they can just apply for that job by pulling it down and they only have to put the post in of the job and then the, the application automatically dynamically populates what jobs are available. Yeah, so that functionality is available with all form builders programmatically. But it's not necessarily easy to do if you're not a developer. However, there is an add-on for Gravity Forms that does allow you to do that. What's the name of it? Um, why don't you come ask me okay. afterwards? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, 
So here we were. We were at the job application and uh, being able to submit uh, that application. <coughs> okay. All right. And this is another use that most people don't think about. All right. An event calendar. What? A form builder for an event calendar? Surely I must need, you know, a full featured uh, event calendar plugin, but not necessarily. All right. Again, here's an example. You have your fields, add an event. And here it is, displayed in a calendar format. Okay? Again, yes. Can you display a list form? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. But this is just an example of the versatility, okay, of a form builder. Ratings. I had someone who contacted me. They wanted to do a um, an art contest, okay? And they wanted uh, the judges to be able to, they wanted people to be able to submit their art for the, for the contest, and then they wanted the judges to be able to come and to rate, um, you know, to give their vote for the, um, for the different pieces of artwork. <coughs> so in this example, these are, I guess, yeah, these are some trails, okay, for people, I guess, who go hiking or anything like that. Uh, so here you can add trails and then you can rate them, all right? Other people can come and they can rate them. And that's a field there. It's called a star rating field, okay? Um, yeah, most, most of the form builders have that field, yeah. And if it's not available by default, then it's available in an add-on, okay? And really that's probably the power of a form builder is, is what I'm mentioning are these add-ons or these extensions. All right, that kind of allow it to morph into whatever kind of system all right, you need it to be. So here's one where I mentioned kind of a gallery format. Okay? And they're just files that were uploaded and now they're being displayed in a certain way. Okay? And what you find is that, just like with WordPress, all you need is the information and then a little CSS and you know, JavaScript love will get it displayed however you want to, okay? All right, and I mean much more, <laughs> okay? You know, put your form builder to work. Make it work for you. I mean, think about it. Most of these form builders, if they cost money, I think the lowest priced one is $39, okay? $39 and you have a tool that can do just about anything, all right, you need it to do, all right? So it's very, very efficient. Okay, it's something that, um, you know, your clients will love you for, all right? They don't have to spend more money unnecessarily, okay? All right, somebody mentioned notifications, all right? All of the form builders have uh, a notification system for you to be able to, um, to either email or send by text message, all right, when somebody submits some data to that form. All right, and you can even perform advanced routing based on the choices that are on the form. All right, so let's say you have different departments. All right, and based on some field that the person chooses, you can say, well, if they choose this field, then we'll send it over to, to this department. If they choose another option, then we'll send it to a different department, okay? And so much more, okay? I've just mentioned just a few, but these form builders can integrate with just about any system you'd like, all right? Most of them have, let's say, a, a CRM, you know, Zoho, um, uh, Help Desk Support System, Zendesk, uh, their Salesforce, Google Calendar. I had somebody just talk to me the other day. What they want to do is they want to take their forms and they want to submit it to, they want to submit it to a Google spreadsheet. I said, well, why do you want to do that? But it doesn't matter. All right, you can do whatever you want, okay? And when all else fails, Zapier. I actually looked up how to pronounce that. It's supposed to be Zapier, like happier, okay? So Zapier, Zapier all of these uh, form plugins have an add-on for Zapier, and Z what Zapier does is it takes these form submissions and it has, I wanna say millions, but it's not really millions, but it's hundreds, it, it will integrate with hundreds of systems. Okay, and all of them are available with, uh, with, uh, with Zapier, all of your form builders. And then if you're a developer, are there any, anybody who programs in here? 
Okay. If you're a programmer, all of these form builders have hooks for days. Okay. Um, with those hooks, you can do pretty much anything. All right. Um, say, well, what about security? All right. Because some people, you know, the lady mentioned a client intake form. What if you're doing that for a doctor's office? All right. There are, um, you know, think healthcare providers and you know HIPAA compliancy. All right. There are there are some add-ons for um, for most of these form builders that will either encrypt the data, okay, or what it will do is um, it will redact the data. All right, so it will completely remove it from the database. So if you just need for somebody to be able to submit the data and then you need to send it somewhere, but you don't want to store it in the database, all right, you will be able to redact that information, which completely removes it, or you will be able to encrypt it. Okay. All right, uh, some other options: polls and surveys. Okay, quizzes. Okay. Um, and so you say, well, hmm, those forms you showed me were pretty ugly. All right, do they all have to look the same? Well, the good news is no. All right, and the reason why is because, um, again, all of them are able to be customized with uh, CSS and JavaScript. All right, there are people that have built uh, integrations for uh, Bootstrap. I don't know if you've heard of uh, Twitter Bootstrap, Zurb Foundation, if that's your... Um, you know, what you like. Um, I'll come back to this form. This form is really popular for me. When people ask me what it can do, this form, people like to come and copy off of this one. And um, you know, you're like, well, how are they getting those tabs? Well, those tabs are just radio buttons, OK? So they've st the guy is, I love him. But you know, he styled it to, um, you know, to show the radio buttons like they're tabs. And that's just using CSS and JavaScript. Okay? So you can, the sky's the limit all right, with the styling. Whatever you can do um, you know, in, those, um, in CSS and JavaScript, you can do with, uh, with any of these form builders. What site is that? <coughs> Excuse me? What site? Oh, uh, samahope.org. They're a really good organization, um, so check them out. And um, another thing you can do is, and this is kind of popular, uh, you can even put the, f the form in a, um, in a modal window, all right? So it pops up, and then the form will show. And here's an example here. So this is, um, you know, this is a, a simple form, you know, name, email. And then when you click on it, it pops up in this modal window, okay? Well, that's not a great example. I'm not a designer, okay? But... That's, that just shows you that you can, um, you know, that you can uh, use that functionality. All right. So, um, okay. <laughs> I'm sold, but which form builder should I use? Anyone that will do what you want it to do and that you feel comfortable with. Okay. There are people that are comfortable with gravity forms. There are people that are more comfortable with ninja forms. There are people that are more comfortable with formidable. It doesn't matter, all right? Just use whatever um, is going to get the job done, all right? The main goal is just to get your problem solved as easily as possible, okay? Um, there, are, there are many options. Those are not the only three, but I would say those are the top three, all right, if you're going to be using it uh, for, for business. Um, and, you know, they each have their strengths, okay? And really, what I'm learning is that it just comes down to personal preference, um, you know, which user interface do you feel more comfortable using? Okay. I'm sorry, can you name those again? Uh, Gravity Forms, uh, Ninja Forms, and Formidable Pro. Which one was the one that, that was the plugin used to create a PDF from a form? Any of those plugins uh, have that capability. They, they're all add ons. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're add ons. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ninja Forms is downstairs, too. You can talk to those. Okay. Ninja Forms is downstairs. Yes. What do you think of the third-party services like uh, Wufu and uh, JetForms? What do you think of those? those are... Well, yeah, those are separate, so they're not exactly. Um, yeah, they're not uh, exactly on your WordPress site. Um, so you do have to embed them 
within an iframe. At least I know that's how Wufu works. Yeah, you have to embed them in an or iframe. Or JavaScript, which doesn't always work depending on your web server. But I've had to use it when I have a client who has a web host mm -hmm. that just doesn't um, send the submissions from Gravity Forms consistently. Okay. You know, GoDaddy. Um, <laughs> uh, where they'll, you'll get it and then it'll just stop working and you okay. call and they get fixed. You know, Jot Forms or Wufu, Wufu is where you, know, you go and, and you basically take uh, GoDaddy out of the loop. So, okay. um, but, uh, you know, I was, I'm a Gravity Forms girl. So. Okay. And <laughs> there's, there's, actually, there's actually a fix for that, for that email issue. What you want to do is, again, you want to take that server out of the loop, and so you want to use some kind of uh, SMTP plugin. Not all um, web hosts will, uh, will allow that. But pretty much, wouldn't all of them Interesting. access uh, uh, Mandrill? Yeah. And that's, that's I use Mandrill uh, mm -hmm. on my site. And basically what that does is that just uh, makes sure that my email is going to get delivered and I can check and see that it got delivered and see that the person yeah, opened it. SMTP yeah, it, they still weren't getting it. All yeah. right. So, um, Did you try Mandrill? No, I hadn't. I okay. just switched it over to Jot Forms because they didn't have any full forms. Okay. So, um, yeah. But yeah, Mandrill is really good. They're free. Um, they're free for up to, I think, 12,000 or 12,000 cents per month. So, um, but again, they're a really good service. And there are some other services. Um, SendGrid is another one, uh, Postmark. And I mean, these, these services send uh, email for, you know, Didn't some of the top companies. Yeah. 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 Really yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's from the, um, from the creators of MailChimp. That's correct. What is yeah, so it's, uh, it's what you call a transactional email service. So it's not for sending out a campaign, all right, to your mailing list, but it's for sending out things like uh, new account emails, um, submissions from your form, okay? And if you want to make sure that the person gets it, you don't want to be doing email on your own server, okay. all right? You want, to send, you want to allow the people who do email for a living, you want to let them handle that because email is... Uh, it's an interesting beast. Well, that's something you would use if you had MailPoet. If you had MailPoet on your machine, you could use Mandrill to send the emails out? Is that... That's a good is, question. Just think of Mandrill like an SMTP server, but right. that it's somewhere there. else. It's yeah. You're just saying, Correct. Here, here's yeah. the email, send it. You're taking me. your web host out you of the picture. That by usage. It's free for like up to 10,000 emails, or 12,000 okay. emails a month. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah. there's a uh, WordPress plugin for Mandrill. Okay. It's, it's really great, mm -hmm. and yeah. you're using their, and because you're using Mailchimp's infrastructure, it's more likely it's going to get through. Because if you're sending it from your own server, you know you, they, you might be on a spam list because someone else on the shared hosting is, is spamming people. How do you spell that, Mandrill? M A N D R I L L. Mm -hmm. uh, this yeah. lady had a question. I inherited a number of sites that use Contact Form Seven, mm -hmm. and I had it mentioned it as one of the big. I see it used a lot. Do you have any experience? Yeah. Yes. And so this is, um, my opinion is for business, for business use, you want to use plugins that, um, plugins that allow you to do as much as you can. All right. So contact form seven, you're not going to see, you know, all of the add-ons that you're going to see for the, the um, you know, the other plugins that I mentioned, all right? So where it's and working, you wouldn't say to pull it out and replace it, but for yeah, no. sites, you might not no. use it. No. If it's working, yeah, no. Like I said, use, use whatever is going to get the job done. But for business use, I would encourage you to use a plugin that has, uh, you know, some kind of business model, all right, that's going to be around. All the plugins that I mentioned, they do have a business model, all right? So people, this is their... This is their livelihood. They're making money off of it, um, you know, not just a purely donation model, all right? Because when you're running a business, <laughs> you want your stuff to work, <laughs> all right? Uh, you want some kind of support team that you can talk to, all right? And you want to make sure that you can do uh, as much as possible with it, all right? That there's a healthy, um, healthy ecosystem around it of, um, you know, people contributing, and there's add-ons and extensions and, um, so that's why I did not uh, recommend that one. And I don't know that Contact Form 7 just saves the submission data. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm. There's a plug in that will keep it on in the bay, but it's just like. Oh, I don't have Okay. Um, he had oh, yeah. I, I had more of a question about. I know it's not an email talk. Okay. Everybody was talking about email. Okay. And that's kind of relevant. Mm -hmm. um, so, like with DreamHost, mm -hmm. if you're on shared host and they send everything out to a relay server, okay. And blah, if that relay server spams and your mail gets spammed. Mm -hmm. But um, they, at least DreamHost was saying, hey, if you SMTP, we still send everything through our relay servers. Interesting. So we suggest that you you know, do VPS because then your mail is sent from your server okay. and you're kind of responsible. I was just wondering if anybody else had any experience with that, if they use VPS and then didn't have a problem because they were sending it from their server. Okay. So I think that's something that we can probably um, – we can probably talk about that. Okay. I just want to get to some more yeah, questions. Okay. You had a question. Um, it's, um, I'm working with a client who is a nonprofit. I was just talking about this this morning. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at this strike. Okay. And so we've been using WooCommerce, just what you're saying. Why are you doing that? Then we have, well, the, the event has, you know, maybe five ticketed things. Okay. And it's a yearly event, so... So here I'm looking at Stripe, sounds like a nice solution, mm -hmm. but you still, so we don't have SSL, we would need that because yes. we're using um, PayPal. Okay. PayPal takes a huge chunk. Mm -hmm. So you still need to set up the bank account, <coughs> right? Still, okay. I mean, you just need to have a bank account, and then you just give Stripe your bank account details, and so, they will. So, okay, so like like Square Up, where you. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But doesn't Stripe take the same? It depends. Yeah. It depends, it's, but yeah, yeah, it's not. It's, it's very, it's very similar. Yeah. Is it? It is, but you don't have the bizarreness of PayPal. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, people can have a PayPal account. So wait, wait, wait. Okay. So yeah. one more, one more okay. thing there. So if I had like you know three ticket events and three items I was selling swag, would it make sense to use something like that, or is that? Absolutely. Absolutely, and you know that's a good question. So, should I use a form builder? You know, that's probably a really good good question. Should I use a form builder? If you have more than just a few products, all right. If you need a checkout flow, if you need people to add things to a shopping cart, please <laughs> use an e-commerce plugin. All right, that's not what your form builder is for. All right, it's just not, you know, it's not designed for that. But if it's just a few products, um, you need to collect, you know some additional information um, by all means um, again for a membership plugin if you need drip content and things like that use a membership plugin okay well, a lot of those membership plugins also work with the form builders so they have integrations as well so you can use <coughs> yes but there are there are some cases where it does not make sense to use both because you don't need all of the functionality of a membership plugin people think that okay let's say I want restricted content well, I need to use a membership plugin. Actually, you don't. Um, I know specifically that Gravity Forms integrates with, um, gosh, probably the oldest uh, restricted content plugin called Members, all right, by somebody called Justin Tadlock. And that's on the WordPress uh, plugin repository. That allows you to restrict content based on, you know, the user's role, okay? So you don't necessarily need a membership plugin just to have some people sign up and restrict the content that they can see. Okay. She's been waiting a while. Okay. Uh, what was the name of your Stripe plugin? Uh, Gravity Forms plus Stripe, and then I have one for Formidable. He, he had a question first. Could you use Form for something like a, instead of using, uh, what's it called, Easy Digital Downloads? Could you use it like that? So if you had just only one or two downloads? I do. Okay. I do. It might not be uh, for everybody. Like again, if you need all of the functionality that um, you know Easy Digital Downloads has, then use that. It's a great solution. Um, I've I've worked with Easy Digital Downloads, um, but for example, to sell my plugin, I use Gravity Forms. Most people use a big e-commerce plugin, but I just use Gravity Forms because all I need is to take a payment. All right. And what it does behind the scenes is I have, a, um, I have an add-on that when the payment comes in, it generates the license keys 
Um, it adds the, um, the download link to the email and it sends it to the person. So I just, I didn't want everything that, you know, that those other plugins had. So I just made something simple for myself. Okay. So uh, is there a way to integrate some of these form builders with the e-commerce? Yes. <coughs> yes, yes. To me, it just looks a little clunky. Like either one, three of those will do it. Any one of those. Yeah. So I think WooCommerce, iThemes Exchange, uh, Easy Digital Downloads—they all have plugins that um, integrate with the form builder, so that you can create a form and then add it to the uh, to the checkout experience. Okay. Anybody? Yes, sir. So anybody else? I got another one. Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, within HubSpot, or you sign, on HubSpot, you can just sign up. If you sign up for their email, they ask you a lot of, more questions than most of ask. Okay? Mm -hmm. But then they'll have like a digital download for like at the end of a blog post. They might have something special to that blog post. Mm -hmm. But when you, if, if you have been on their site before, and if you've signed up before and you hit that button, it pre-populates, which I think is mm -hmm. the thing you were talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It pre-populates that form. Is that from a cookie that's on my browser that's pre-populating that form so I don't have to fill it out? Again. I basically have to confirm that that's correct and say yes and that's it. Okay. So there are a couple different ways to do it. Um, some of the form builders, I'm not sure uh, exactly which ones, they do have a uh, save and continue feature. So what you can do is you can save the form and come back to it later. All right, so let's say somebody gets halfway through it. They're like, oh, I need to do something else. Well, they can just save it and come back, and it will uh, have all of their values saved. And so what that's uh, doing is that's using the database. Okay, so it saves the information that they filled out into the database, and so when it comes back, um, you know, it will either it, they're going to use a special URL to come back, and that URL will be attached to the information that's in their database, um, or it can use a cookie. All right, and another way is uh, to use a user login. Okay, um, for some of my plugins, like for example, you mentioned the uh, the Stripe one. What people can do is they once they pay once, it saves their information to their user login. So when they come back, they just click a button and it will automatically use their saved payment information for them to be able to pay again <coughs> without having to re-enter their credit card information every every time. Yes, sir. Is there a way to do that with gravity forms? Yes. Yes. So it's built <coughs> which it's which built which one form. which one that I mentioned? Save and continue. Save and continue. Yes, in the latest version of Gravity <coughs> Forms. Yes. That save and continue that you were talking about mm -hmm. using it on a quiz. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain place where you would add that? Like, would it be on each each page or so uh, add that to one quiz? Yeah, so I think on the form you just hit a setting that says allow, save, and continue, and it will automatically, um, oh, you know, okay. so it's just a setting that you enable on the form. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, I believe that's all that we have, and if you have any questions, um, there's my email address. Please, feel free. I love talking about forms. <laughs>